Hi my friends. So it's 5.8. It's applications of factoring and so some word problems and um, but don't worry I'll be telling you about my favorite one and so or favorite ones. Um, they have like the blueprint of problem solving and I kind of wrote out mine but I wanted to make sure that I put this number one read the problem at least twice before making any judgment on whether you think you can solve it and I tell I can't tell you how many times that someone tells me that there is a word problem and they can't solve it and I'll ask them oh which one was it blah 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 whatever you know maybe I try to guess which one it is or whatever and they say oh I don't know I haven't read it and so you can't just make a decision on whether or not you can solve it. You got to you got to read it first to make sure. Sometimes it's helpful to list the knowns and unknowns. It's always helpful to know what the problem's trying to get you to find. Maybe it would be helpful to draw a picture, maybe it would be helpful to use a formula, maybe it would be helpful to write some things in kind of pseudo algebra. To me pseudo algebra means when they start talking about the sum, I'm writing the plus, you know, to help myself go. Sometimes I have to make a table to guess and check. Um, you're required to write equa an equation in these, and so this table can just help you get you to your equation on what needs to go. And so sometimes that's helpful. Um, and so you want to make an equation with one unknown. Uh, hopefully it's what you want to find, and then solve it and check your answer. Does your ma answer make sense? Answer the question asked by the problem. Since these are quadratic, a lot of the times, not every single one of them, but a lot of the times you get two answers and one of the answers makes sense and the other answer doesn't make sense. There are a couple of them that have two answers though. So warning on that. There are some that have two answers. Okay, in a sports league of X teams in which all the teams play each other twice, the total number in of games played is given by this. Where teams in the women's, uh, so they give this formula and then they say the teams in a women's softball league play each other twice. So that means this formula applies because this formula goes uh, for when a league plays each other twice. Our bowling league, we play each other twice. And so, um, so there's a total of 56 games. So right here, they've told me you can use this formula. So this because they said what the formula was for and then they described the situation that they're using it for and it's for the formula. And so I'm on maybe use a formula. And guess what? They told me the formula. So what I want to know is, I want to know is this 56, is this the number of games played? Is this the number of teams in the league, X teams in the league? Or is it the number of games played? So let's read it again. For a total of 56 games. So is that the number of teams in the league? You're right. That's the number of games that are played. This is in, right? Then it asks how many teams are in the league, right? Which is the other variable. So that's good. So we know x squared minus x equals 56. Now I know that people say, well, shouldn't you double it because they're going to play each other twice and all of that. The formula takes that in consideration. And we looked at this formula, I think in chapter one. And in chapter one, they gave us X and asked us to find N is what they asked us to, uh, to find. I don't know if you remember that. So I notice, oh, if I'm going to solve this, right, I have my equation. If I'm going to solve it, I'm like, oh, it's degree two. I need to get zero on one side because it's degree two. Degree two, degree one, degree zero. So the highest is two. So I need to get zero on one side. So I'm going to take away 56 to get zero on one side. And he knows he's last. And I'm thinking, hmm, what, multi what two things multiply together to give 56? And if you don't know, if you can't think of things that multiply together to give 56, you can use your calculator, right? You can come over here and you can say 56. It could be one times 56, but it ha I didn't want to go here because I was going to run out of room. And, but it has to subtract to be one, right? In fact, negative one. 
and this is a subtract, and no, those subtract to be 55 or negative 55. Well, 2 goes into 56, and I can use the calculator. 56 divided by 2 is 28. And no, when you subtract those, you get 26. That's not what I wanted. And 56, I doubt it divides by 3, and it doesn't. And I'm not sure if it divides by 4, so I'll check. It does 14 times. And when I subtract those, I get 10. I'm getting closer, right? And 5 doesn't go into 56, I know for sure. And I don't think 6 does either, but you could check it if you didn't know. Uh, I was saying I don't think it does. And then maybe the one that you've been screaming at the TV, right? Here it is, 7 and 8. And that's what I wanted because those subtract to give 1. So 7 times 8. Now I know, make the first work, x times x. Make the last work, 7 times 8. I know that one's positive and one's negative. I want the bigger one to be negative, negative, positive here. So this is x plus 7, x minus 8 equals 0. So when we set the pieces equal to 0 and we solve them, we get negative 7 for a possible number of teams in the league, or we get, for the possible number of teams in the league, we get 8. And we want to make sure that we pick one that makes sense. So does it make sense to have negative 7 teams in the league? No. Does it make sense that we could have 8 teams in the league? Certainly you could have 8 teams in the league. That would work out. And so uh, this is 8 teams is our answer. Now, you could kind of check to make sure it doesn't seem like they would play each other twice, right? If you wanted to, if you were like really wanting to make sure, you could say, well, eight teams, A, uh, B, we did this on the last, C, D, E, F, G, H, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And so uh, A is gonna play um, B twice, C twice, D twice, etc. right? All the way to the last one, H twice. And how many games just involve A? Well, two, four, six, eight. Uh, oh, I didn't write them all out, sorry. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I hope I counted them right. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And then B is going to play everybody twice, but we've already counted B playing A. So B is going to play C twice, B is going to play D twice, B is going to play all the way to H. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It should be one less, should be two less games, because um, one less team, right? And so 12, and it continues, this is 10 games, this is eight games, uh, this is six games, this is four games, um, this is two games, and, uh, and then H will have played every one. Uh, and so when you add those up, this was with eight teams in the league, uh, 14, it should be 56 games, right? Plus 10, uh, 12, plus 10, plus eight, plus six, plus four, plus two, Hope I got them all in there, 56 games played, right? And so you could make sure that what you found was right by counting them out. Fortunately, it wasn't a billion, so we could do it. The height of, ooh, strawberries. Oh, and what a fancy treat. Okay, I'll have the other one after this video. Uh, wow, mm, mm, mm. I told you I had been making videos for a while. The height of waves in a storm depends on the speed of the wind. Assuming that the wind has no op, uh, obstructions for a long distance, the maximum wave height h for a wind speed x can be approximated by, and then they gave me the formula, hot diggity dog, I say, where h is in feet and x is in knots, and knots stands for nautical miles per hour. For what speed, for what wind speed, would the maximum wave height be three feet? 
So they're telling me to use this formula. And they told me the wave height is three feet. So do you think they're telling me X or do you think they're telling me H? I agree. They're telling me H. The height, right, is three feet. So they told me H is, where H is the height, where H is in feet. Did they say H was height somewhere here? Here it is. H is the height. You have to read for miles to find that the H is height, but it, it makes sense, right, that it is. And so we're going to put in h is 3. So our equation will be 3 equals 0 0.03x squared plus 0.6x minus 6. And so, and I want to solve that. And it's quadratic. See it, degree 2? Degree 0, degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. So the highest is degree 2. Whenever th something's degree 2, you get 0 on one side. So here's the leader. So I'm going to take away 3. That goes with the, the last. So I get 0 on one side. And I'm like, holy cow, I don't think I ever had to factor with a decimal in there before. What the heck? I remember that there were a few that had 9, that had um, fractions. But decimal, what? Well, friends, you can get rid of the decimal, right? All you have to do to get rid of the decimal is multiply to clear it. And so let's see what we would have to multiply by. This is buried to the tenths, the hundredths. So to clear this decimal, you would have to multiply by 100. Let me show you on my calculator. Clear that other stuff out, 0.03, right? Put the zero in front of there, it does not matter, right? That's not the problem, that's not the issue. So if I multiply by 10, it won't get rid of the decimal, right? It's still a fraction, it's still a decimal. So that's not good enough. But if I multiply by 100, remember tenths, hundredths, that's where it was buried, then it comes out to be a very nice number, 3. And so that's what I want to multiply that by, is 100. Now what you multiply one thing by, you have to multiply everybody else by exactly the same thing. And so this guy needs to be, be multiplied by 10, right, 0.6. But you have to do them all by, so it needs 10, but you have to, if you do this one by 100, you have to do them all by 100. But let me show you that doing this one by 100 is cool too, right? It's not, it's not as nice as 6 is, but you have to do them the same, and all I wanted to get rid of the get rid of was the decimal, so multiplying this by 100 gets rid of the decimal as well. So I needed 100 for this, 100's okay for this, I don't need anything to get rid of the decimal here, but what you do to one thing, you gotta do to all the others. So we decided that we have to multiply by 100, and we're gonna do it to all of the terms. Multiply by 100, so you're gonna multiply 0 by 100, you're going to multiply 100 times this term, 0.03x squared. You're going to multiply 100, 100 times uh, 0.6x, and you're going to multiply 100 times 9. You have to do them all. You don't get to just pick and choose. So you don't get to say, well, I want to do this one by 10 and that one, no, no, no. They have to be all the same. It's a balance is what it is. And so this is going to be 0. This is going to be 3x squared. This is going to be 60. Remember, I already did that on my calculator, so plus 60x. And this is going to be minus 900. And now I'm ready to, um, so this is a way of going. People will tell me, well, I did this and it also worked. And you're right, there's another way of going as well. I just think this is the easiest way. So that's my story. And so now I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, it's a trinomial. And I know how to factor a trinomial. I always start with the greatest common factor. And so I say, you know, when I get here to factoring it, right, it's in descending order. It's got zero on one side. And so I'm on factor it. And I always think every single time, greatest common factor doesn't matter the size. And they actually have three in common. I say greatest common factor, but one of my colleagues, I won't say who, 
uh, just in case uh, they don't want me to say uh, their name on uh, YouTube. One of my co colleagues says WTF, which is what's, what's the factor is what it stands for. And, um, and so I think that's kind of cute too. Uh, but I say greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor? So he says, what's the factor? And so we got a three out. So three times x squared is three x squared. Three times 20 is 60 x. Three times 300 is 900. That's zero over here, right? And, uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna factor this. I'm done with the three, but x times x. Uh, let's see, 300. Multiplies together to give 300. But when you, uh, when you subtract them, you get 20. What could work? I had to have a drink. I was looking because I thought um, my son had a, a tray with some strawberries on it and um, some of these uh, little crepes he made. And I'm thinking, I gotta get this video done so I can get to those. Did you guys get 10 times 30? So that makes 300, but when I subtract them, I get 20. And I want the 30 to be positive and the 10 to be negative. So check it, when I multiply them, I get negative 300. When I combine, because there are different signs, you subtract, and that's why I said I was gonna do a subtract, and I get 20, and it's positive. So this is gonna be x minus 10, x plus 30. And there's a three here, and equals zero. And then I'm gonna be out of room and wishing that I would have not written in the middle of the page. Do you ever wish you didn't write in the middle of the page? And, um, and so I'm thinking about extending out um, onto the back. No, I don't know. Oh, Donna, Donna, Donna. I'm thinking about racing uh, me saying that I needed a greatest common factor. And I don't know why. I have more room over here on the left, but I just don't feel like I can go left. I feel like your work can go right. I don't know why. Okay, so I have three factors, but three is never equal to zero. But x minus 10 is equal to zero when you add 10 and you get uh, x is 10. So three is never zero, that doesn't give a solution. x is 10 is one solution. The other solution, and you'll forgive me, is I'm out of room, is x plus 30 equals zero. So I take away 30 set each piece to zero, right? That didn't give a solution. Three is not equal to zero. If you think it is, I will give you zero dollars and you give me three. Um, everyone do it, everyone participate. And so I get negative 30, right? And so I'll just ask you, do you think the wind can be going 10 miles an hour or 10 knots per hour? Or do you think the wind can be going negative 30 knots per hour? So usually when they talk about um, wind speed, it's usually positive. You don't talk about, I, I've never heard on the news them talking about the hurricane had a negative wind speed or anything like that. So this is it, so it's 10 knots is the wind. I would play a, a song with wind in it, but I become leery of playing any songs because my videos get banned when I do that. And um, I can play them in my classroom. Uh, but I'm not allowed to play them in my Zoom classroom. What's up with that, YouTube? Um, and so um, the Pythagorean theorem uh, talks about the ratio of the sides on a right triangle. So it has to be a right triangle. Um, the C side is called the hypotenuse. I didn't name it. And it's always opposite the right angle. If you don't have a right angle, then the Pythagorean theorem doesn't apply. And then you um, square the other sides. Um, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So it's pretty amazing, the Pythagorean theorem. If you wanna check out uh, some, um, some coolness with the Pythagorean theorem, there's a lot of cool, coolness on the internet about the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe we'll do that in class. And so uh, Robert has a 26 foot ladder and it's leaning against his house. Uh, if the bottom of the ladder is 10 feet from the base of his house, how high does the ladder reach? And so um, it's a good idea to draw his house 
And so since he's my next door neighbor, Robert, I know what his house looks like. Chimney over here, right? So there's his house. And I know what his ladder looks like too, leaning up against the side of his house. So here's his ladder. And here's the ground coming out. Here's his ladder. So I've drawn his ladder, and they said the ladder was 26 feet, so I think I'll note it right there, 26, right? 26 feet. And then they said that from the bottom of the house, the base of the house, the bottom of the house, the base of the house, to the bottom of the ladder, so from the bottom of the ladder, here's the bottom of the ladder, to the base of the house is 10 feet. And then they asked you, how high does this reach up on his house? So we want to know that. And you can kind of see that, hey, there's a right angle right there, right? So there's our right angle. And, um, and so um, and our Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And c squared, the only thing, that's the one you have to be careful about. It has to go right across from the uh, right angle. So this is 26 squared. And then this B, I'll call B 10 squared, and I'll call this A. And so A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? So this is B, and this is C, and that's A. And so all I have to do is find A, and then I'll be in business. So this is A squared plus 100 equals 26 times 26, pretty big, and I'll get my calculator to do it. 26 squared, or 26 times 26, 676. And then there's another way of solving this, and I'm okay with you doing another way. I'm showing you the way that your uh, the book um, shows, and the book says that it's degree two. So since it's degree two, get zero on one side. So I'm going to take away uh, 676 from both sides to get zero. And then the second step is to factor it. Hey, Susie girl, how are you doing? And so you're going to get up here and show everyone your math abilities. So now I'm on factoring it. And I'm thinking it's a binomial. And binomials, I like to factor more. Hey, sweetie, the people feed you. Um, and so, um, uh, greatest common factor, well, it's one. Is it a difference of squares? Because that would be the second thing you would think on a binomial. And so, seven, 576 is not my, I don't know if that's a perfect square or not. I'm wondering if it is. And remember, I showed you, hey, you could use your button to see. It certainly is a squared, and then it's a minus. Oh, it's 24 squared. It is. So this is this is a DOS. And so this is a squared minus 24 squared, which is add the bases, a plus 24, a minus 24 equals zero. So I'm gonna set the pieces equal to zero, a plus 24 equals zero, taking away 24. That's telling us that the the ladder goes up negative 24 feet on Robert's house. And then a minus 24 equals 0, add 24. So do you think that this distance here, yeah, distance is positive, right? And so um, 24 feet on his house. So we did a good job on that. I would, you know, recap uh, so deliciously if there wasn't strawberries and grapes uh, to be had at my house. Uh, and so that sounds good to me.